Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to today's session. Myself Bhavna Srejit, I am a student of class 10 studying in Silver Hills Public School, Calicut. Today, I am here to discuss on the topic assets which is based on the second chapter assets, bases and salts of the class 10 NCRT science textbook. In this session, we will be discussing on the basics of assets, that is what are assets, the classification of assets and the physical and chemical properties of assets. So without any further delay, let's get started. What are assets? We come across a lot of assets in our daily life. For example, lime juice, citric acid, vinegar, acetic acid, milk, lactic acid, etc. We can say that acids are substances which in their aqueous solutions changes blue litmus to red, shows corrosive properties, reacts with majority of the metals to liberate hydrogen gas, reacts with alkalis to form salts and are sore in taste. They release H plus ion in water and are good conductors of electricity. Acetic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid are some of the examples. Classification of acids. Based on the origin, acids can be classified into two. They are organic acids and mineral acids. What are organic acids? Organic acids are present in organic substances. What are organic substances? They are the naturally occurring substances. So we can say that organic acids are naturally occurring acids. In general, they are less acidic than mineral acids and the corrosive property is not shown by these acids. Some of the examples are acetic acid, citric acid, malic acid, etc. Now, let us look at some of the common organic acids and their sources. Acetic acid in vinegar, citric acid in citrus fruits, tartaric acid in tamarind, oxalic acid in spinach and tomatoes, ascorbic acid in goa and amla, and lactic acid in milk and curd. Moving on to the next type of acid, mineral acids. Mineral acids are prepared from minerals. They are known by different names. Mineral acids, inorganic acids, man-made acids or synthetic acids. They are more corrosive and acidic than organic acids. Some of the examples are hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, phosphoric acid, perchloric acid, etc. Here we have some common organic and mineral acids. Citric acid, tartaric acid, acetic acid and lactic acid are some of the common organic acids and phosphoric acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid are some of the common mineral acids. Let us move on to the physical properties of acids. Most of these properties are those which we have learned in our lower classes. Generally, acids are sore in taste and are water soluble. Acids changes blue litmus red. What is litmus? Litmus is an indicator which is purple in color. It changes red with an acid and blue with a base. Talking about indicators, what is an indicator? Indicators are substances that indicate the acidic or basic nature of a solution by color change, change in their smell, etc. Some of the common indicators used in the laboratories are litmus, phenolphthalein, methyl orange, etc. Acids have a pH value less than 7. What do you mean by pH value? 
it determines the hydronium ion concentration in a solution. Mathematically, it is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. It derives its origin from the German word potens of hydrogen. So acids always have a pH value less than 7. The last two properties are most acids are corrosive in nature and they conduct electricity. If you would remember when we were doing the electrolysis of water, we add a few drops of acid into the water. Why is that done? Pure water is a poor conductor of electricity. So to make it a better conductor, we add a few drops of acid. This example shows that acids conduct electricity. Here we have the pH scale ranging from 0 to 14 and a warning which shows the corrosive property of acids. Let us now move on to the last topic of this session, the chemical properties of acids. Before moving on to the chemical properties of acids, let us see what is the reason for the acidic nature or acidic behavior of an acid. We know that acids are corrosive in nature. Let us study this with the help of an example. Taj Mahal, one of the seven wonders of the world, is losing its beauty. Why? It is because of the acidic air pollutants released by the nearby factories and industries. These factories and industries release enormous amounts of sulfur dioxide and sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide. This sulfur dioxide then combines with the air and air has moisture and when this combines with the moisture it forms sulfurous acid and this sulfurous acid corrodes the marble. Listening to this we understand that Water has an important role in the acidic behavior of acids. What is that role? When acid is dissolved in water, it dissociates into hydrogen ion and the corresponding negative radical. The formation of hydrogen ion in the aqueous solution is the common property of all acids. These hydrogen ion reacts with the water forming hydronium ion and this hydronium ion is responsible for the acidic behavior. HCl or hydrochloric acid, a common mineral acid, dissociates into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. This hydrogen ion then combines with water forming hydronium ion. Similarly, acetic acid, a common organic acid, dissociates into hydrogen ion and acetate ion. This hydrogen ion combines with water forming hydronium ion. Strength of an acid. What determines the strength of an acid? Strength of an acid depends upon the hydronium ion concentration per unit volume of a solution. When a concentrated solution is diluted by mixing water, then the concentration of hydronium ion also decreases. And this is the reason why diluted acids have a milder action. Based on the strength, acids can be divided into two. They are strong acids and weak acids. Strong acids. An acid which is completely ionized in water to produce maximum number of hydronium ion per unit volume is called a strong acids and the examples include mineral acids including hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid etc. Weak acid, an acid which is partially ionized in water to produce a small number of hydronium ion per unit volume is called a weak acids and the examples include organic acids such as acetic acid, lactic acid, citric acid, etc. Some of the strong and weak acids are given here. The strong acids include hydrochloric acid, 
nitric acid, hydroiodic acid, perchloric acid, chloric acid, etc. And the weak acids include sulfurous acid, methanoic acid, phosphoric acid, nitrous acid and hydrofluoric acid. Moving on to the reactions of acid. In this chapter, we have to study four reactions. The first reaction is the reaction of acid with a metal. When acids are reacting with metal, it produces the corresponding salt and hydrogen gas. When HCl reacts with magnesium, it produces magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Similarly, when zinc is reacting with sulfuric acid, it produces zinc sulfate and hydrogen. Now how to make sure that the gas evolved as hydrogen? Just bring a burning matchstick towards the test tube in which you are performing the experiment. If the gas evolved as hydrogen, then the matchstick will extinguish with a pop sound. But there are exceptions. What are those exceptions? When metals are reacting with nitric acid, hydrogen gas is not liberated. Why? Nitric acid is a very strong oxidizing agent. So, it instantly oxidizes the hydrogen gas formed during the reaction to form water and an oxide of nitrogen. Hence, when a metal is reacting with nitric acid, the products formed are the corresponding salt, water and an oxide of nitrogen. What is the second exception? Only the metals lying above hydrogen in the reactivity series can liberate hydrogen gas when reacted with acids. Now what is a reactivity series? Reactivity series is the series of metals based on their reactivity from the highest to the lowest. In a reactivity series, the most reactive element is placed at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. This is the reactivity series. By observing it, we can understand that potassium and sodium are the most reactive elements and silver and mercury are the least reactive metals. So when acids are reacting with metals, only the metals lying above hydrogen in the reactivity series can liberate hydrogen gas. For example, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, etc. Moving on to the second reaction, reaction of acids with metal carbonates. When an acid is reacting with metal carbonate, the products formed are salt, water and carbon dioxide. When sodium carbonate is reacting with hydrochloric acid, the products formed are sodium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. The same way, when calcium carbonate is reacting with sulfuric acid, the products formed are calcium sulfate, water and carbon dioxide. Reaction of acids with hydrogen carbonates or bicarbonates. When acids are reacting with bicarbonates, the products formed are the corresponding salt, water and carbon dioxide. When sodium bicarbonate is reacting with sulfuric acid, the uh, products formed are sodium sulfate, water and carbon dioxide. This reaction is used in the soda acid fire extinguishers. Moving on to the last reaction. Reactions of acids with metal oxides. What are metal oxides? Metal oxides are crystalline solids which contain a metal cation and an oxide anion. They are generally basic in nature. So when an acid is reacting with a metal oxide, the products formed are salt and water. This is a type of neutralization reaction. When sodium oxide is reacting with hydrochloric acid, the products formed are sodium chloride and water. Similarly, when potassium oxide is reacting with carbonic acid, the products formed are potassium carbonate and water. 
with that said we have covered the topic assets on a basic level assets contribute in a lot of ways in our daily life and having a proper knowledge of them will make our life much more easier so that's all for the time being thank you for your patient listening until we meet again bye